Good morning. Welcome to 89.9 Seconds, the show where we bring you the news in under 90 seconds. I'm joined this morning by the lovely uh, Frida Liu and uh, Cheryl Ko. We're going to be talking about drugs, dogs and billionaires. He's Ku Su Chuang. And I'm Ku Su Chuang. <laughs> Cheryl, if you could touch a dog, where would you touch the dog? At that event, the I Want to Touch a Dog event, which had just happened. And uh, let's talk about the backlash that has come up from the event what, itself. But why the backlash? What, That's what, the what's, thing. What's why the this? death threats? Yeah. Why not have a intelligent Is this discourse? a storm in a teacup, Frida Liu? Do I feel there's a storm? It is a storm in a teacup. But the, here's the thing as well. You know, we do live in a multiracial country and there are sensitivities. What does multiracial mean to you, Cheryl? Mohiba. Mohiba. Yeah, Mohiba. What does Mohiba mean? Yeah, I know, but it also goes against certain things as well, so we have to be very sensitive about it. To me, I think it was just wrongly branded, as in, I want to touch a dog. But it's, when you say branded, it means there was actually a campaign behind well, it. So what was the brand? The, the whole brand is calling it, I want to touch a what, dog, what would you, right? What would be better I would be getting to know dogs, okay. removing fears, you know, understanding dogs or whatever, because the whole area was actually around dogs. It wasn't so much about animals. But if you take that into that perspective, then people will look at it very differently because there are certain sensitivities, certain factions, certain groups that says you shouldn't be wanting to touch dogs. Yeah, but by us discussing it today, we're actually lending more fear to the fear itself because, I mean, this is essentially a storm in a teacup. I know, it's a, a way to provide discourse. You know, but I love issue. how this has happened though, despite what's ha going on, at least we're having a discussion. Yes, ten an years intelligent, ago, rational discussion. Ten years discussion. ago, could this discussion have taken place? Probably not. Probably Five not, years ago. right? Five years ago, not. Yeah. yeah. So, what does that tell us about the state of the our nation's maturity? I think we're moving in the dir right direction. I feel that we're, we're getting just, there. Yeah, we're we're are, we there. Moving, yeah. are we moving sideways, do you think? Uh, it's sideways, but moving but up. There, yeah. How much further can you hit a shuttlecock if you take drugs? I have no idea. Or how accurate can you be? Yeah. Of course, we're talking about uh, an athlete in badminton. We don't know who it is. Of course, you know, the papers have been talking about the Dato Lee. Um, the whole idea behind sports and supplements or whatever it may be, is quite disappointing. I hope it's not the case. Whether it's number one or number 43, if they're caught taking banned substances, they should be penalised. However, the whole idea, I'm really upset. I hope that's not the case because sports, to me, is the final frontier. Cheryl, do you think this is uh, a methodology of character assassination if you take the other alternative view? It could be. It could be because that's what um, Chong Wei apparently said. He wants to be there when the substance mm. or whatever it is is opened. The sample B is opened just in case somebody slipped something into the sample. But so the, how, is it, how is the character assassination? It's test results. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you for test on all athletes. because now we, we think that, uh, he, you know, this res previously respectable character has, uh, you know, he's been fallen. built up. Yeah, he's fallen oh, well, from he grace. Exactly and whether or not, whether or not he's actually guilty or not, right? His character has now been called into question. This is the industry you're in. You're in sports. You're not, you know, whatever the case may be. The same could be said of us. The same could be said about right? politicians. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but our <laughs> politicians and sportsmen are on the same pedestal. Everybody, where the law is concerned. Everybody should be on the same page. Everybody should be penalised for whatever they're doing. The gap between should be and reality is a wide chasm. Yes, that's something we're always talking about but here. But what the about season. the fact that a lot of them do it? So if those who don't do it, Doesn't they mean fall it's right. back? So Tony Fernandez is in trouble. He is uh, resting for control of his Caterham F1 team. I think the question really is, Jaya, guys, whether or not billionaires and tycoons should really be owning sports franchises. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, that's the thing. Should you just stick to your business, right, and get good at your business? He's good at your... flying airplanes. Exactly. Well, not really flying airplanes, but, but running you know, a... The, the industry and all that, and why go into this venture, right? So, yeah. I, I don't know. I just feel that... Is it an ego thing or is it really oh, a marketing so. thing? I think it's an ego <laughs> thing, you know. Oh, I'm going to own this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to... Mm. Yeah, but you know, the airplanes, you know, the, the sports teams, the, the TV friends, the camera, commercial rights, huge marketing um, platforms. For huge him, marketing yeah. platform, but here is now going to impact all these drivers who don't know where they yes. stand at the moment. And yes. that's, you know, I think it's people's lives and... Livelihoods know, as well. I, yeah. In the picture. If you own shares of AirAsia, would you be a bit miffed that Tony is so busy running a sports team that he doesn't have time to run the airline? I don't think so. I mean, as long as the airline is okay, I guess. But if it's, anything but worse it's not, to happen, it's in a very tough place right now. Right? Yeah, again, mm -hmm. I think come back and focus back on your business, on your core business, on your core strengths, you know, and rather be this, you know, boys and their toys, you know, that's what a lot of guys are like anyway. Flavio Beratori, um, you know, um, Vin Pansy Vincent. Pansy Vincent Tan. You know, these guys run for, you know, big retail brands. They, they need as many eyeballs and eardrums as they can reach. So this is a great platform for them. Yeah, but do it well. 
do what you well. do well. Yeah. yeah, and don't don't just have too many hands in too many jars. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, mm. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you for Okay. Thank you for watching. Okay. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, leave them below. See you next week. Only good ones. Only good comments. <laughs> <laughs>